Hi, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Enhancing the Human Experience. Now, I want to be, may as well state this right up front, I'm a little tired at the moment. I've been staying up until the wee hours of the night creating products for the new Enhancing the Human Experience. In enhancing the Human Experience store, which I'm really excited to share with you. And it'll be either, I'll either be sharing that with you in three days or three years, depending on what part of me wins, my perfectionist OCD side or the part of me that just needs to get it started, get it done and move forward. So there's like that battle going on inside, but it, it is fun. I am having a lot of fun uh, crafting these products really to help you remember the awesome creative power that's within you, um, your divinity, the, the, your power of imagination, the metaphysical side. Super excited to share all these products with you. And I'll be you know, showing you some products on future episodes of the show too. I've got two mugs on their way now and I'm gonna be putting one of the posters that I'm gonna create or have created uh, up behind me here. So I'm gonna be having that order, maybe get you know 20 by 24 by 36 or something to that size, but you'll be able to see some of the things. I'm gonna you know put, things, put these things up here on the show for you to see. And I'll share with you some of the items as they come in. But so I'm a little bit, I will, a little bit off at the moment, but in this episode, I wanted to share with you, I wanted to basically share the story of how the store came to be because you know it didn't start out as enhancing the human experience store it started out as another name i was going to build a whole different brand and different company with products still for conscious creators you know um, products and apparel and clothing for conscious creators based on reminding you of your divinity reminding you the power that's that's within you you know that's within all of us and which which I think is hugely valuable in our world. You know, we we are definitely focused on the material world. You know, we're focused in the mind. We're focused on what we can see, and all the magic, all the good things happen because of stuff we can't see. Right? They come from the other side, the spiritual side, the metaphysical side. And so, I wanted to share this story with you, which I call playing red light, green light with the universe or with your higher self, because in the game of life, that's kind of what we're doing, isn't it? You know, we want to take the right actions at the right time in the right way. And in order to do that, we've got to tune in to that wisdom inside of us. Sometimes that can be a little bit challenging. I, I know for myself that it is on occasion. And actually, two years ago, I set one of my goals, one of my New Year's resolutions was to be more intuitive and develop more intuition, because I think that's where it's all at. Maybe you've reached that point in your life where you believe that's where it's at too. And you've kind of gone to the end of the road of what you maybe to were told to do or what, you know, people said, hey, if you do these and these things in this way, in this um, format, in this sequence, you're going to have happiness and success and fulfillment and meaning and all that. Maybe you didn't reach that. I, I think that's the case for a lot of people, not just in the West, in America, but in general, right? Uh, we're, we sometimes have to go back down the road we came down and go down a different road in order to find the meaning, the happiness, and the fulfillment, which, which I really believe is why we're here. This doesn't mean that sometimes life's not going to suck and we'd have to push through, but ideally, if we're totally in alignment with our higher self, with the, with the wisdom inside of us, then we should be doing the right thing in the right way at the right time. But doing that takes takes some practice and that's why that's one of the reasons why I really recommend to parents and if I ever become a parent teach your kid this stuff at an early age don't put all of your eggs in that basket of knowledge or what is known right or linear thinking or logical thinking because that will only get you so far and maybe you've realized that in your own life that's why we need to really be teaching kids connect with their intuition get in touch with how they're feeling. Feelings never lie, right? That's that's the way our higher selves communicate with us. It's by how we feel. If something feels off, back off a little bit. And that's that's why I look at it as this game of red light, green light. So let me get let me double back to the story that that I started about the two stores. So enhancing the human experience store, which will be coming online in, in remember three days or three years, didn't start out as enhancing the human experience store. It started out 
as a different name. And I don't really need to share that with you because it's sort of irrelevant at this point. But it was a different name, different brand. Everything was different. And there was a lot of good energy around that. I was excited. I felt it was in alignment and complimented what I'm doing here on the show and with the digital products and my books that I've written, sharing metaphysical and spiritual knowledge. It was really in alignment, but there was something off and I could feel it at certain points on certain days. I mean, this is the store is something I've been working on for maybe five, six months ish, maybe four or five months. And Sometimes it would feel really off and I just couldn't find the, it didn't feel good to work on the products. Didn't, it felt out of alignment with what I was doing, with what my maybe my purpose or my mission in life was. And so what I started doing, you know, going back to that resolution that I set for myself a few years ago is I started backing off and I would be like red light, right? When, when, when myself or the universe was sending me a signal in the way that I was feeling, wasn't feeling like it was the right time to push forward or move forward, then I would back off a little bit and I would totally put that project away and work on something else. And then when it felt right again, I would pick it back up again. And this went on for about a month or two, on and off, on and off, making a high degree of progress, right? It's built on the Shopify platform, uh, the, the, the store that you're going to see within a few days will be the same store, same platform, same type of feel as the other one was. So the infrastructure was being built, but there was something off with the, with the way it was being branded and presented. Remind you that, mind you, this is a totally different company that I was going to build. And it was going to be, you know, I had separate social media, I had separate Facebook pages, all of that, that I was planning on managing and integrating in with my current content management strategy. So it was a significant infrastructure build, including a, a, a separate website, like I said, and it was going to be something that was going to be, that would probably take up all of my time, producing the social media content and producing the products and managing that store, and then, of course, continuing the pod, podcast and doing the other digital products. But so I was playing this game, you know, if it felt off, I would stop and put it all away, where as prior, I would just push forward, right? Because sometimes... I get in this mindset of I'm going to get my goal and I'm going to reach my destination, whether it feels good or not. Have you ever done that? You just keep pushing. And sometimes we need to do that, right? It's not always, things don't always have to feel right in order for us to, you know, move forward. Sometimes we just have to plow through and get things done. But I kept going back and forth on this red light, green light with my higher self or the universe, universal consciousness. um, And Eventually, another idea emerged, and that was to integrate it with Enhancing the Human Experience, the podcast, the store, all of the things that I've built around this venue. And everything seemed to click at that point, and it felt right. Whereas the other project didn't feel right all the time, this one feels more right more of the time. And so I made a lot of changes and, and you know, produced the content for Enhancing the Human Experience Store, which I've shared some of that information on my social media channels. But maybe you can relate to this. And the reason I share this story with you is that I think that's where it all is. I think that in order to live your best life and do the thing or the things that You are meant to do, express yourself in your own way, because I really do believe that all of us come into the world like a flower or a bird or a tree to express a certain thing or express uh, a certain, you know, maybe you are a singer, maybe you're a musician, maybe you're an artist, maybe you're good with numbers. We all have our thing and our gift, right? This goes back to the ikigai, the Japanese reason for being symbol and the process that goes along there. We all have a reason for being. And so we need to do things and we need to tune into what that is and kind of ask our higher self for the wisdom and the guidance. And maybe you've done this in your own life, asking yourself and and waiting for the answers to arise within you, because I really believe they will as soon as we get more in tune with our intuition. And I think most people, myself included, have been a lot out of tune 
historically. The goal, and, and that was my goal, like I said two years ago, was to get more in tune with my higher self, my intuitive self that knows a lot more than I do. This is transcending the, the mind, right? Transcending the carnal mind or the race mind, which is sometimes very diluted. Well, that's <laughs> that's putting it lightly, right? Just like the Buddha said, you know, the the Buddha realized that w most people are living in Maya, the the illusion of separateness all the time, and so I really believe that's the case. We 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 feel separate from God, from our divinity, from our higher selves. Meanwhile, we're making all these choices and doing all these things in life that are on on one end of the spectrum, making us sort of unhappy or not getting us to what we want or our goals, and on the other end of the spectrum, causing enormous amounts of suffering for ourselves and other people. So there's, that's like the continuum of damage that can happen when we are disconnected with our higher selves or from our, from our intuition. So the reason I share the story with you is that maybe you have played this game in some way or another in your own life with a project or maybe a business you're starting or a job that you want to get. And the red light, green light game can be a really good way to identify whether you should move forward, whether you should not. In a, in a very real sense, any mentor or advisor that you have or a guru or guidance person, guidance counselor, so to, so to speak, always should take a second seat, a back seat to your inner wisdom, your higher self. You know, we should be tapping that first and foremost. And this is why sometimes I think that people get too focused on getting a mentor or an advisor who, again, is a human being who has the same challenges to overcome as we do and putting too much stock in what they say and maybe not enough stock in the inner guidance, inner wisdom that's inside of us. I mean, that should be our, our inner guidance should be our co-pilot or our co-partner partner in crime, so to speak, in business and in life, first and foremost. And sometimes that gets overlooked. And I know that I've done, I know that I've overlooked having that entity, my higher self, be my partner in business and life for a long time. And, and as I get older, the more I realize that's where all the answers are. That connection is where, where it all happens. And if you have children, get them doing this at a younger age because you don't they don't want to get down the road in life. You know, you might want to might as well give them this information when they're younger so that they can have a lot more time to practice that connection. Because like any relationship, I do believe it is a relationship and we do need to develop it. We can't just ignore it, right? Or it'll, it'll kind of wither on the vine and die away. Develop it and teach your kids, hey, the 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 real answers, the real wisdom, the real knowledge is inside of you. It's not in the books you read. It's not in your teachers. It's not in the government. It's nowhere but within you. And help them start cultivating that. Because I, the reason I'm so passionate about teaching this information to children at a young age, the metaphysical and the spiritual side, is because they're a tabla rasa. They're a clean slate. They have not got any corrupted, for lack of a better word, information already in them that they have to unlearn. There's no unlearning for them. If you teach your children this spiritual and metaphysical knowledge before anything else gets in and that becomes the foundation, which I really believe that it is, that's one of the things that I'm passionate about sharing this information with you in the podcast and in my books, I believe that's the foundation. If you give it to them early, then they have the foundation built and then anything else they build upon will be, will be better. Right? You can still have the, the carnal knowledge. You can still read the books. You can still learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's awesome. But that shouldn't trump or shouldn't be the foundation that you build your child's life on or your life. You know, We shouldn't build the foundation on the foundation of the intellect or the mind because that's fleeting. That's, it doesn't have the connection to our divinity and the source that we came from. Whereas if we built it on our intuition and the knowledge within us, then it does have that. So that's why I'm really passionate about giving this information to kids at a young age, because if the, the sooner you can start your child off on that platform, think how far they will be able to go. Think how much be, they'll be able to do. So, so share this information with your kids at a young age. I'm actually working on a podcast and have one on my list of 10 books that I think every parent should share with their, their child. And these are books by 
people like Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Louise Hay, Byron Katie wrote an awesome book about um, a tiger. You know, she talks about the um, is it true principle where you're asking yourself, is this really true? Some awesome authors out there. Another one is the the little engine that could. I think I can. I think I can. Right. There's some awesome books out there that that can give kids the kids the foundation of and to build an amazing life on. So that's one of the things that I'm working on. Even though I don't have children myself, I'm really passionate about sharing this information with the with the kids because, like I say, their minds have not been. Um, they hasn't had. They haven't had maybe garbage put into their minds yet. And I say garbage lovingly, you know, all information and knowledge is beneficial. We just have to know where to stack it and where to build upon. You just don't want to build build upon something that may be shifting. So that's really the podcast. I just wanted to, you know, uh, offer that as a su suggestion to play the game of red light, green light with your higher self or with the universe in some project or business that you might be working on and see how that plays out. See how you're feeling. It's a, it's a it's a vibrational game, isn't it? It's a feeling game. If you're not really feeling it, so to speak, something that you're doing or a relationship or a business, then maybe back off a little bit and then ask for that higher guidance or ask for some guidance in general and then see what comes up because it's there for us to tune into. And my understanding is that the guidance is always being given to us whether we hear it or not. So we just need to listen really closely to that guidance and then move forward with it. So I think that's really powerful. But that's the game of red light, green light. And, you know, if you follow me on social media, keep an eye out. Like I say, it's either going to happen very quickly or far away. But I'll tell you something, a uh, little secret. I'm really going to launch this thing before I'm ready because ultimately what project is ever complete and ever done, right? Um, and after I launch it, I will be putting more pro more products in there because I've got pages of ideas for shirts and mugs and posters and all sorts of things that I'm really excited to share with you. And these are basically spiritual metaphysical truths or knowledge that I've gathered on my journey over the last number of years that I use all the time in my own life. And what better place to put this information than on the clothes we wear every day or the things we use every day to give us that constant reminder of how to manifest the very best life for ourselves, how to create consciously, how to remember our divinity, how to draw on that power that's within us. What better place to put it on than all the things we use every day? I've even got mouse pads coming up down the line, probably not initially here, but I've got some designs for mouse pads coming up. So really anything and everything that I can think of to share these this truth with you and these this message with you. I'm really so excited. So that's the podcast. I thank you for tuning in as always. And until next time, all the best, health, wealth, and success. Bye-bye.